Hello, my name is Ian Buckley and you are watching MakeUseOf.com. Today we'll be installing pixel LEDs into a PC tower, using the Blink service in order to control them, and also setting up IFTTT integration to give us a notification sign when we have a new email in our inbox. We'll be using the WS2812B strips for today, but almost anything similar will work so long as they are individually addressable. And we will also be using the Node MCU development board as it is incredibly cheap, has onboard Wi-Fi and is generally brilliant. Once we've created our circuit and installed it into our case, we're going to use one of the unused Molex connectors in there to power it. Most PC power supplies will have a 4-pin Molex left over from when you would connect either a CD drive or a floppy disk drive, so you should have one spare. However, if you don't, it is possible to buy a splitter in order to split the power off. We won't be using too much power for this particular build, but uh, always be wary that you don't want to pull too much power from your PC power supply or bad things will happen. In order to attach our Molex pin to our circuit, we're also going to need a female Molex connector. I just pulled one off an old CD case, but if you do need to buy one, they're available on AliExpress for around 30 cents. Now to set up our circuit on our breadboard. You want to set it up like this. Uh, this is very similar to the standard way you would set up any set of NeoPixels or individually addressed 5 volt LEDs. The difference being we have a switch running through from the power line to the V in of the Node MCU. This is just so that later we can flip that switch and plug a USB port into the Node MCU and program it safely if we want to change anything later on. From the D3 pin of the Node MCU, there's a line running through a 220 ohm resistor, and that goes to the data line of the NeoPixels. This resistor can be any value from 200 to 500 ohms. It's just something in order to get a clean signal on the data line. And we also have a capacitor across the power line of the LED strip. And again, this can be anything from 100 to 1000 microfarads, as long as it is rated higher than 5 volts. And this is just to make sure that our LEDs get a constant flow of power. This fritzing image is available in the article on the Make Use Of website, along with another article which covers these pixel LEDs slightly more in depth, which you might find useful if this is your first time working with them. Once you've got it all set up, it should look something like this. Uh, don't worry if yours looks a little bit different. In this case, I used a capacitor and resistor that were already attached to some proto board that I'd used in a different project. And also, instead of a switch, I've just got a simple circuit breaker. Uh, the basic point there is just that you can isolate the V-in of the node MCU from the circuit for later use. Next, we need to set up our project inside the Blink app. So create a new project and give it a name and select the correct board, which in this case is node MCU. And you're going to want to make three buttons and three sliders, which coincide with the virtual pins of Blink V0 through to V4. If this is your first time using Blink and you've never really used it before, we have an introductory article also on the Make Use Of website, which takes you through it in a decent amount of depth and should let you get a hang of this web service. Next up, we need to code our Node MCU. So open up the Arduino IDE and make sure that you have the correct board selected and also the correct port for your node MCU. And also you will need to install a couple of libraries for this. So uh, we'll need the Blink library and the Fast LED library, which are both available to install from the library manager inside the Arduino IDE. The full code for this project is available on the Make Use Of website. Although now I will go through the code that I've created for this project piece by piece and explain how each bit of it works and what it is for. So to begin with, we need to include a few namespaces. One is the ESP8266 Wi-Fi namespace and the other one is the Blink Simple ESP8266 namespace. These two things are both required for usage with Blink. And the other thing we'll be using is the Fast LED library in order to control our LEDs easily. So uh, the fast LED requires certain definitions, uh, the LED pin, which will be whatever pin you have connected to the data line uh, and your node MCU. In my case, this is three. And the number of LEDs you will be using. So if you're testing using a few less LEDs, of course, for now, you can just put that number there. The final number of LEDs I used in my tower was 44. The other three definitions are for brightness, LED type and color order. Uh, these I took just straight from a different example of fast LED and I have left them alone. Uh, there's no need to change them unless you have a different type of LED. And again, with the CRGB LEDs, number LEDs array, that is just something that works internally with fast LED and I just left it alone. 
Now we set up three variables for our R, G, and B integers. Uh, this is what we're going to use to set the color on the LED strips manually. So um, I gave them 500 each just to get started. Uh, you don't have to do this, you could just set them to zero, and that means they will default to being off. And the next two variables are what we're going to use in order to have different states. So the master switch is a simple on-off state, whether we want the lights to be on or off. The auto mode variable is do we want them to be manual so we can choose the color using the sliders in the Blink app, or do we want it to be in an automatic mode, and in this case use a, a rainbow mode from the fast LED library which just goes through colors slowly and nicely. Uh, both of these I set to 1 to begin with because we want it to be on when the node MCU powers up, and we also want it to be in automatic mode when the node MCU powers up. Next we include a variable called GHue. This is once again just something the fast LED library uses when we have it in automatic mode. Next we have our Blink variables. Blink requires an authorization code, this will have been emailed to you as soon as you created the project in the Blink app, and it also requires your Wi-Fi name and password so the node MCU can talk to the Blink server through your Wi-Fi. Now we create our setup function. All this does essentially is add our LEDs into our fast LED array and start communication with the Blink server using the details we provided just before. Now we can create our loop method. So we want Blink to run every time the loop goes round, and we also want to insert our own logic. So here, the first if statement, if the master switch equals equals zero, this means that if the button in our Blink app has sent a zero to the Blink server, we want to do something. And in this case, we have a, a for loop which uh, gets all of the LEDs in order and turns them to black, essentially turning them off. The next if statement is if the auto mode is set to zero and the master switch is set to one, i.e. it's in manual mode and the LEDs are on, then we use the same kind of for loop in order to give our LEDs the different R, G, and B values we have set on our sliders. Uh, fast LED dot show here is what actually makes it happen, and a delay of 30 means that it actually moves around the LEDs rather than doing it all at once, which is quite satisfying. Finally, we have if auto mode equals 1 and the master switch equals 1, i.e. it's in automatic mode and everything is turned on, we're going to use the fill rainbow effect. This just comes with the fast LED library and is quite a pleasant rainbow effect that morphs around. Next we need to create a few functions using the Blink library. So Blink write reacts to what happens in the Blink app. In this case for V0, the master switch gets turned to whatever the parameter is as an integer. So if you turn the master switch off, the parameter as an integer will be zero and that will affect the logic in our loop. Next we want to set up three functions for our red, green, and blue sliders. These are very similar. This sets the variable to the parameter as an integer, although this time instead of it being 0 and 1, it'll be between 0 and 1023, as that is the values that the slider sends, and also the values under which the RGB LEDs work. Next, we set up a function for our virtual pin 4, which is very similar to the first one we set up. This just switches between auto and manual mode by using the parameter as an integer once again. Now we need to create our notification light. So this is another Blink virtual pin function. Um, I'm going to make it so that whenever we receive an email, the lights spin round 10 times in red. And I want that to happen no matter what else is happening. So whether it's in automatic mode, whether it's in manual mode, even if they've been turned off, I want it so that when an email comes, I get the flashing lights. So in order to do this, we create an integer called G. And much like before, we're going to take the parameter as an integer. So G will be one or zero. So if G is one, then it has a, a couple of nested for loops, and all that does is it turns each LED on and off in quick succession individually 10 times. For now, this only works with the button in the app, but later we can make a web request from IFTTT in order to do this whenever we receive a new email in our inbox. Save the sketch and upload it onto the node MCU so we can test our circuit. At this stage, I laid out all my LEDs on the side of my PC casing in order to check how they would all fit, and then soldered them all into a line so that I could test them all at once. Now it is worth bearing in mind that with these LED strips, the data lines have a discrete direction which is denoted on the LED strips with a little arrow, so you will need to make sure that the data all flows in one direction or this won't work. So once you've got your LEDs soldered together, attach your circuit to them, and boot it up and give it a test using the Blink app. 
you should find that they boot up in automatic mode and then you can change it to manual mode, change the color individually, turn them on and off using the switch. And also with our test button, you should be able to see the spinning red notification for an email. Now that we know that's working, let's set up our if this then that integration for our emails. Now we need to set up our if this then that integration. So create a new applet and select Gmail as the channel and the any new email in inbox as the trigger. For that, we need to go to Maker and select Maker Webhooks. And the only thing that we have there is make a web request. And what we're going to do is make a web request to the Blink server. Now, the URL we will be using is made up of the Blink IP address, your authorization code, and whichever pin you are using. Now, in order to find the IP address of the Blink server, ping blink-cloud.com. Uh, you need to do this because they've had some issues with geolocations on the IP addresses before uh, when you just use a normal web address, but using the IP address seems to work fine every time. Uh, once you've done that and entered your authorization code, we can change the method to put and the content type to application slash JSON. And finally, give it a body of one. Go ahead and click create action and then finish and our IFTTT app is now finished. Now, what this applet does is what it says on the tin. Whenever you receive a new email in whichever email address you have specified, in this case, I've used my work one, it will send that web request to the Blink server. And what that does is it triggers V5 and it gives it a value of one. And as we saw in the code before, that is what triggers our notification light. Now all that is left to do is to move our circuit over onto protoboard so that something a little bit more permanent and install it into our case. Uh, I decided to use some DuPont lead connectors uh, in order to connect the LED strips just so that I could quite easily disconnect them if I wanted to take the side of my PC case off again. And I also opted to only attach the two pins from the female Molex connector that we will be using. The male Molex connector has a red and a yellow and two black leads. Uh, we are only interested in the red and black lead as that is the five volts and uh, ground. Uh, you really want to make sure you don't use the yellow leads to plug into a node MCU or these LEDs as that is 12 volts and it will definitely blow it up. As you can see, in this case, an old piece of protoboard was used. I've just been reusing some old components as this is a temporary measure. I'll be rebuilding this all over again with a much bigger PC desktop soon. So this has just been a test for me. You can, of course, make it much nicer. You could even make a case for the circuit so that when it's inside your PC tower, it looks nice. You can set this up anywhere that you like. Just bear in mind that it obviously needs to fit nicely inside your PC tower and that whatever you do, it needs to be insulated enough so that it doesn't cause any shorts. Uh, all I did in this case was the bare minimum. I put something insulating on the back and um, I just attached it high up in my PC case using a zip tie as I knew this thing would only be in here for a very short amount of time. Though for something more permanent, you could create a case and mount it inside your PC tower. Now turn your PC off, install your board and connect your LEDs before attaching the side panel back to your desktop PC. Now this might be an easier or harder project depending on which tower you have. For me, the LEDs fitted in quite nicely straight away, although I can see in some other cases when you maybe don't have so much space in the case, you might need to shuffle them around a little bit in order to make them work. Whatever you do, make sure you always have your PC powered off when you are messing around inside it and trying to find space for all these things, as you really don't want to A, shock yourself, or B, cause damage to the computer with static shocks or accidentally shorting apart. Now that that's all set up, power up your PC, and the LEDs should automatically go into the rainbow mode and start morphing round. You'll be able to test using your phone whether you can make the changes, and if you want to send yourself an email, you should get your notification light. Although bear in mind that everything with IFTTT tends to have quite a delay. And so you might not see the notification light immediately. This is more for if you receive an email and you don't have your email program open, it will give you that notification so you can know to check. One final thing, the switch or circuit breaker that I said to put in the circuit is there because it allows us to reprogram the node MCU without us having to pull the whole thing out of the computer case. So long as the computer is off and that circuit is broken, i.e. the switch is turned off or you've pulled the top off the circuit breaker, you will be able to plug in via USB and reprogram what happens with all of the LEDs without risking blowing up your node MCU board or drawing too much power or any power spikes or anything like that. 
So this is a simple way of adding good lighting to your PC case. Uh, all in all, the parts for this came in at under $10, which is pretty cheap. And um, although we've put some functionality to it, we haven't really done much. The automatic cycling through from fast LED, there is a huge amount of stuff in that library you could look at. And again, with the manual mode, instead of just changing the RG and B values, you could set up your own custom runs that you've designed on the LEDs. As for the notifications, Yes, we have Gmail right now, but why not add Twitter and Facebook as well? You could have it uh, blue when you get a new follower on Twitter, or maybe flash green when you have an interaction on Facebook. As always, if you get stuck or you have any problems, check the article on the main Make Use Of website. And uh, don't forget to subscribe to this channel for weekly tech tips and giveaways. My name is Ian Buckley. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.